All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from, well, a rainy San Diego, so it's not that usual. And uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by Steve Dwarman, who is just up the road in LA, I think recovering some rain as well. It's very traumatic for Southern Californians to be getting rain. <laughs> If you're in a car, it's devastating. It is devastating, yeah. And in the field of infomercials, Steve is considered a top industry ex expert, has a keen eye for picking products, and was responsible for many huge successes in the industry, such as the Total Gym, which I can say I was once an owner of, a very good product, which grossed over $2 billion in sales. Steve, you also created the first women's perfume sold on TV called Curiosity, I like that, grossing over $60 million in sales in six months and the first reality TV app for the iPhone called Real Weather Girls, which resulted in 70,000 downloads in the first two and a half weeks. That's an amazing success. And that's what we're going to talk about today is laws to success. So, um, so Steve, give me the genesis of where you came up with the, I mean, define your laws to success and then the genesis of where you came up with this. Well, it, 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 there's a little bit of a, kind of unusual backstory for this. Um, I have for years uh, consulted with some of the major companies like Apple, Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, but I've also been an entrepreneur and created a lot of my own companies and products, such as the first woman's perfume on television, uh, as well as a skincare line and a, uh, another skincare company. Mm -hmm. I, I published a magazine with Ad Week, Brand Week, and Media Week, which was their most requested supplement on direct response TV. And mm. we were kind of like the uh, uh, the rag that revealed all the inside data and sales figures for 12 years in the industry. Wow. So this was a, a interesting project in that I got a call from the superintendent of LA Unified School District that they had been working with Microsoft for a uh, creating an app to help kids and parents get back to school safely after the pandemic. Right. But they needed some marketing uh, uh, video created that was going to get people excited and show them how to use it. So somebody had referred them to me and uh, I worked with them really extensively on creating it from scratch. And as such, I got to talk to a lot of teachers and a lot of parents about a year and a half ago, and they were all having huge, uh, terrible, terrible times, emotionally, uh, physically, um, economically. Mm -hmm. And after the video was done, and it was a huge success, they presented it at the Hollywood Bowl huh? to all of the news media, and it was on every news station in Los Angeles. But I came back after the project was done, and I said, People really need help. What can I do? I'm one person right. who works out of my home. So fortunately, I have a pretty good Rolodex. And I called up and talked to professors all over the country and in Europe. And I said, people are really having a hard time. Do you think we could help them? And they all said, yeah, absolutely. And so they all contributed content to the book. And we've got seven of the world's top experts contributing information on uh, what to do financially now, how to get a better job, um, how to get through your own personal fear, mm -hmm. how to find the love of your life, and how to get in shape in minutes a week instead of hours. Right. And it's, 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 it's fascinating, Steve, because as you say, uh, the, you know, the pandemic, the pandemic um, I think, uh, exacerbated a lot of things that were already there under the surface, like people starting to feel disconnected, people uh, uh, and all of that. And and since the pandemic, now we have obviously economic uncertainty, we have war, uh, we have and we have things on the horizon like technology, like AI. And I think people are in a real state of like they don't like they feel like their heads are spinning and they don't know where they're going. So um, how, how did you, uh, with all these experts, how did you figure out how to maybe even the starting point where people can at least still themselves for a moment? Well, um, we have um, 
we have two people predominantly that deal with that. Uh, one of them is Dr. Joan Rosenberg, who is a uh, professor of uh, psychology at uh, Pepperdine University here in Los Angeles. And then we also have um, uh, Dr. Robert Muir, who's on staff at the UCLA Medical Center and teaches how to get through your fear, <coughs> excuse me, um, and how to kind of set aside all of that stress and to grow as a result of it. And the, the amazing thing about these professors are that they've devoted 30 or 40 years of their life to really researching this and finding out what works and what doesn't work. So um, the book is the book has all this expertise in it. It's only $22, mm -hmm. but I mean, you can really legitimately change your life with even one of these chapters. Mm -hmm. And and I think, uh, as you said, like people, I think before, like, people felt very stuck in jobs, I think, and uh, maybe stuck in locations. And all of that's changed now because we have hybrid, we have remote working, we have, you know, lots of people can go live wherever they want and work. And, and so it's created... It's created a lot of of, of freedom and, and and choices that people didn't have before, but at the same time, there needs to be you know sometimes everybody kind of gets stuck at the start point. Like so, if you want to go find your ideal career or configure the job, it's it's just that starting point that most people struggle with. Yeah, exactly. And um, there, uh, uh, Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff is one of the chief economists in the in the world. And he's an advisor to the World Bank and a lot of other places. And um, he he basically talks about where you should be investing your money right now. Um, he also reveals a website you can go to that if you've got a regular job, if you're a nurse, uh, if you're even a janitor, if you're a plumber, um, if you've got a trade job that you're doing, this database that he tells you to go to will tell you every major city in the country and how much for the job that you're doing that city is paying on average. So he cites some examples where you can be doing the same job that you're doing right now, but in another city be making as much as 40% more for the same job. Mm. And I think that that's that's phenomenal because, I mean, that's so, again, that's like liberating for people because we never had access to things like that before. It was either word of mouth or you could do some research. But now it means you can make informed decisions and literally the kind of the world's your oyster. Exactly. And um, since a, a lot of your audience is sales and marketing oriented, uh, they might have heard the name Dr. Robert Cialdini. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bob Cialdini is a professor emeritus at Arizona State University. He's written a, uh, a book that is kind of this, the Bible of the industry called Influence, the Modern Science of Persuasion. And he's a world expert on influence and persuasion. And he gives you all sorts of tips about how to get a better job. And one of them psychologically is so interesting that if you send your resume out and you get called for an interview, for example, he tells you the one sentence to say during your interview that is going to increase your chances right. almost 100 percent of getting that job offered to you. Yeah, and, and I think that's amazing because... I mean, let's face it, there are some people who are really good at interviewing. They may not actually be that great at the job when they get it, but they're really good at interviewing. And there's other people who are going to be really good at the job, but they're not that great at interviewing. And uh, and so any any tools like that, I think, absolutely helps like level the playing field, playing field somewhat. Um, and then what what advice would you have for for salespeople uh, today? Because, you know, we're operating in such a noisy world. It's very hard to to get people's attention. We're so spam. We're so distracted. I would say and people go, oh, well, you know, I'm busier than I've ever been. And I go, no, you're not. You're more distracted than you've ever been. There's a huge difference. But but so what would your advice with all your experience? What would your advice be to salespeople how to how to stand out from the crowd? Boy, that's like the million dollar question. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you could put that in a bottle, you would be a multi-billionaire. Um, you know, it's really, 
it's very, very challenging uh, for the reason that when infomercials really started in 1989 is when they really started coming into fruition. You know, you put an infomercial on the air that would have some celebrities like uh, Ali McGraw, for example, or Cher. And literally the next day you'd be in the office and people would be talking about it. Right. And the reason why is because you basically only had seven or eight television channels. Mm -hmm. That was it. I mean, cable was just starting to uh, take some prominence, but everybody would be watching those major channels. And now nobody is watching commercial television anymore. Well, I mean, unless it's a live event or a sporting event. Mm -hmm. So the TV stations are broken up with, cable and streaming and everything to hundreds of choices every minute. And now you're uh, diverted further with online. So coming up with ingenious ways to just stop people for a second to capture their attention, it, it's really a talent all into itself. Mm -hmm. And and that's, and that's why it's becoming, you know, harder and harder. And it's, it's, and I guess nowadays, one of the challenges, and I think this is a challenge most businesses have, is that you need real domain expertise in, in different areas. And it's impossible now, even in marketing, you know, it's impossible to have generalists really now. You, you need to have people who understand, you know, SEO, people who understand, you know, digital marketing and maybe email marketing. But it's not... It, it, you, they're so they're so specific um, that it that it really now is a challenge. Now you can use things. You know the great thing now is you can use things like Upwork and all of that, and you can find contractors to help you. But you really have to focus on what are the core things that you really need and find experts to be able to maximize or optimize that for you. Well, and the and the truth the truth is that there are an awful lot of people out there that call themselves experts, but when push comes to shove. They're expert at taking your money and not delivering results. <laughs> yeah, that's very true as well. Um, so, what, what, what were some were, when you were putting this book together and working on this book? I mean, was there anything that surprised you that you weren't expecting, or that you weren't even expecting to come out of this project? I was surprised with uh, Dr. Martin uh, Gibala, who talks about how to get fit in minutes a week instead of hours, because so many people kind of let themselves go during the pandemic yeah. out of shape. And he is uh, one of the world's foremost experts on interval training. Mm. He just talked about how you don't need any special equipment to do this. And he gave the whole mechanism of how uh, to get your pulse rate up and exercise for 20 seconds and then take a breath for uh, maybe two minutes and then do it again. And you repeat that pattern. And so within 15 or 20 minutes, you've got more exercise and trained your heart more than you would if you walked for 45 minutes. Mm. Also, you increase your fat burning by doing it for hours afterwards that at just a nominal pace of walking, you wouldn't do. So on a physical level, that was uh, that was one of the things that was really interesting. And we have, and since I'm talking about physical, Jersey uh, Gregoric uh, has won heavy uh, weightlifting championships worldwide. And he and his wife came here from Poland and they started UCLA's weightlifting club. Mm. And he uh, does a whole chapter in there about aging gracefully, where, you know, you don't have to kill yourself. You just have to do some very simple exercises every single day to increase your longevity, increase your stretching ability and increase your strength. And um, slow and easy was something that really resonated with me because for so long we've been hearing um, you have to, you know, you have to go all out and you have to do it for an hour a day or there's no benefit. And it's, it's not true. And I think that's that's one of the things with our uh, our environment nowadays, too, is that it's really important to kind of slow down a little bit and catch your breath instead of going full throttle all the time. You miss a lot. 
Yeah, no, I, to- I, I, I totally agree with that. And, and the good thing about what you've outlined there about the, you know, the physical and the fitness and that is that it, it kind of takes away, there's no excuses, right? No excuses left. If you yeah. like that, if you want to go more intense, that that's great too. Um, but you're, you're correct because, um, I think for, I think people are fine. The other part I think, and I'm sure you you cover this too, is the other part I think people are realizing is the mind body connection that it's not good enough just to, you know, it's great to have a a fit body, but if you don't have a fit mind and if they're not working in tandem, then uh, together, then, you know, you're going to have issues. Right. Um, The other thing, the other thing I think that's really important, uh, especially for your sales and marketing Mm -hmm. is that, um, I have never seen anything move product as successfully as a 30 minute infomercial on television. Right now that's changed a little bit. I mean, you, you have some influencers that have 40, 50, 60 million people and they put the word out on a product that's really interesting and they can sell things in a blink of an eye, but how do you really maintain and build a business? Not just a one shot deal. And I think that, um, you have to create a world that people want to visit right. and it's time to be able to do that. It's not just a quick 15 second thing, 30 second thing. You have to really create a world that they want to feel comfortable in, participate in, and that they get a benefit from. And it's kind of an oasis from their everyday life. And, and what I like about what you just said there is because everything is so I guess, what's the correct word? Like substitutable. I'm not sure if that's a word, but um, is, is. That, is that we just jump from things to things. Like we have no brand loyalty, as you say, because like we look at something for 30 seconds and go, oh, that looks cool. Let me buy that. And then, oh, that looks cool. I'll buy that. Oh, that's a new word. That's a different thing. Oh, I like that better. So being able, as you say, to create somewhere where people want to come and want to sort of feel like have some connection with the brand. I think that's the thing is have that connection with the brand. Cause I think people just don't, apart from a few obvious examples, like people don't have that much connection to like, I'd say 99% of the brands they use. No, not at all. And um, so I I think it's really important to think about the world that you want to create and, uh, and what's important to the people that are watching it. I also think, integrity is really important. And I don't think that there's that much of it now. I mean, everybody, everybody throws something against a wall, hoping that it's going to stick. But I mean, what if you launch something and, um, and you were getting native negative feedback on it, you could bury it, Mm -hmm. or you could address it, and you could reformat it. And you could make it up to the people that purchased it by maybe sending them a new version of it. Uh, and that reputation gets around and it depends whether you're in it for the short haul or the long haul. Yeah. And I guess that's the difference is you could look on that as thank you for that valuable feedback that's allowing us to improve and get better. Or as you say, like, oh yeah, let's just brush that under the carpet and hopefully we can get away with this for as long as we can, we can get away with it. But I, I agree with you on the integrity and the, and also authenticity. I think people, again, I think this is a hangover from, from COVID as well, or I think it had started before, but I think people want to engage with humans and they also want to engage with people who have integrity, who are authentic. And that's only going to increase now that we have AI and all these things, because who knows what's real anymore? Right. Um, you know, I can create, to be honest, I can I can sit down here and script a video right now and have a video avatar that looks exactly a real person speaking in whatever accent I want, wherever, and you would think it's a real person, but it's not. So I think that the authenticity and the reality is people are going to crave that more. But does she cook? <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. I must say I <laughs> to chat GPT and say, can they cook too? But it is, but it is kind of an amazing thing that there's, you know, we we're getting into that period when we don't know what's real. No, I know that it's, it's a really different time and it's all happening so, so quickly. So having integrity, I think is uh, really the best thing that you can do for the long haul, because uh, otherwise it's just going to catch up to you and you're going to be short term and everything is moving so fast. People are really looking for, I think, foundations that they can trust and believe in. 
Yeah, no, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. And that's a great, a great place. A great place for us to to finish. Um, listen, Steve, this has been fantastic. Some great insights. All of Steve's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and the book and what you do. Oh, terrific. Um, well, the, the book is called Laws to Success, and the two is the number two. So it's Laws Number Two Success. You can look at it at lawstosuccess.com or it's available on Amazon. And it's in paper. It's it's very pretty and it's shiny. I am uh I'm an entrepreneur. I'm working on starting two companies right now. Um and um I uh, am also a writer and I'm uh, writing a stage play uh, about magic that we've had two run throughs in New York. So I'm very, very busy. But, you know, I always love as much input as I can possibly get because I'm working from home like a lot of you are. And mm -hmm. uh, it's isolating sometimes. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. So I would encourage you go reach out to to Steve and and reach out. Look at check the book out. Uh, uh, as Steve said earlier, for like twenty two dollars, you get like I don't know how many hundreds of years of wisdom all brought together, right, from all these different experts. So there's a lot of value in that. Yeah. So listen, thank you, Steve. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again soon. Bye. Thanks so much. Yeah.